satisfaction of recreating. We, we, the only contact we had with the outside world was the Kapoor. And this was the old days of the Kapoor, which meant that every time they made a decision, they put it on and another piece of paper was put on, or at least that's what we got out in the hinterlands. I don't know what it was like, you know, closer to... Well, we didn't even get a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like if they, on Monday, said everybody should wear top hats, they'd put the piece of paper in, and then if Sunday they decide that's a very stupid idea, they, they negate it. And if Wednesday they thought it should be berets, they'd put that in. But so the only way you knew what was actually going on is you had to keep up and read every single piece of paper, which was really difficult. Now, my beloved husband was squire to Sir Chorus, and Sir Chorus took what amounted to that much. It was really thick. I, what, this Was it about an inch or... Bless her. If you kept all the pieces of paper before the revision, it was getting up to about a large. Well, that's what I re paper. that's what I remember. It was that big, and so he took this this uh, <laughs> this thing and he threw it in my husband's lap, and he said, "This will tell you everything you need to know about the SCA." And being it's my husband, he read it from beginning to end, <laughs> and he happily memorized it. <laughs> <laughs> but going up a little further, we uh, we did. We had wonderful activities before we ever became a region officially, and uh, because we had all these Celtic households. And the Celtic households came together in a great conflict called the Cattle Raid of Pycumbre. And um, we are, this was the Kadal and our allies against the Ardoon and their allies. Now the Ardoon were Irish heroes. They sat up on rocks and brushed their hair. You know, they were beautiful. They had embroidery. They had all these wonderful things. And us Scots tended to sit there with sort of in leathers. <laughs> and our allies were a group of Egyptians wandering around in loincloths <laughs> that went fuck when they walked on their butt, you know. So we weren't really, we did not think that we would do well in this conflict. Now, it got really, but I'm there. It's the night of the cattle raid. And as I sit there at this night, I realize that I don't have anybody. I mean, my forces consist of uh, Master Telburn <laughs> and Janae Shadowpaw. There is no one else. I wait all night, and there is no one else. So we had planned to start this with the sun coming up. You know, we had done a weapons inspection. Of course, only had two people to weapons inspect. But we did all this <laughs> in the morning, uh, the day before. So at dawn, this conflict would start. So dawn is approaching, and I have no one, period. So finally I say, I must concede defeat. And I start trudging up the hill to the encampment of the Ardu. And I'm not too happy. At all at once from this high area, I see car after car after car coming up because they all went to the wrong campsite. <laughs> That's another thing about Kadal. They get lost a lot. <laughs> <laughs> One the third day with them. <laughs> so so I, I, I run down the hill, right? And they're doing putting up tents and I say, No, get your armor on now, right? 
No coffee, no nothing. I leave the putting up the things with whatever people they have, and we amass on the list field. No, well, it was the field of battle. And so it began. We fought against the Ardun. But the Ardun, who are supposed to be Celtic heroes, keep staying up in their, on top of their hill. Who ever heard of Celtic heroes uh, uh, doing siege tactics, you know? And we, we got irritated. Now our leader, I'm a warlock, I cling to was Lloyd Von Aker. And the more this happened, Lloyd Von Aker got his very stubborn look. And he gathered all of us together and he said, we will obey every rule. This rope in, that's around our tent is a stone wall. You may not go under it, right? It is our defense. You cannot fight under it. You know, he gave everybody the rule. It was a stone. And we can be honorable even if they're not. And uh, so, I'm, I'm looking there, and there's a little one of our, you know, Tessa. I don't know if you know Tessa, the gardens. Tessa was our third princess, and sometime, one in between a queen. And she's with Simon of Amber, right? But she's a very pet, and she had babies with her young children. And she's very petite, right? And she's coming with a, with a bucket of water and her little horn. And she comes to the road. She carefully puts the child over the road and she picks up this very, very heavy bucket of water and puts it over the road because it's stone. And she can't go underneath the road. And it was one of the most honorable things I had ever seen. <laughs> Now, we had children at this event, right? And the children came up to me and they tugged on my tunic and they said, Queenie lady, what can we do? And Tessa said, what can the children do? I'm going, children? Where did we get children? <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of them. I mean, I had never seen children at an event before. You know? <laughs> I'm going, what are we going to do with the children? And I say, we have enemies. And our enemies may be circling into the woods behind us. Your job is to stand guard and tell us when they come through. Well, okay, all the children left and I didn't have children anymore. <laughs> so I'm happy, uh, you know. And we're having a big war meeting. And all at once, the same little one comes up, the muffin comes up and goes, Queenie lady, Queenie lady, right? We have, we've gotten, a, there's an assassin to kill you coming through the campsite. And I said, all right, so we all ran over right and there is the assassin you know the the only one from the pond and he's there and the children will have him ringed right you know he doesn't know what to do and we show up and and all at once he grabs one of the boys i think it was Zane. it was tessa's child and he grabs one of the children and he takes his mock dagger and he says I'll kill the child if you come for closer and at that point the child bit him live <laughs> 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 <My> weapons <laughs> <laughs> and if you've ever heard the song that we sing about uh, uh, rising of the star mm -hmm. right you know there's a line in it that says the little buggers bite <laughs> this is where that comes from <laughs> <laughs> and after this, we took the gentleman, and since this was resurrection, we stole his helmet, stuck it on a, on a, a stair, so he couldn't resurrect without his helmet. So he was wandering around being a ghost for most of the next two battles. <laughs> but... <laughs>
the Ardoon leadership came down on Razmus did, you know, and told us that it was, we had an unfair advantage. And we looked at it and said, what? He says, you have children. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, children and geese, I can't control what they do. You know? <laughs> now, so the Ardoon went back up on their hill and they stayed and they stayed and they stayed. And uh, finally, uh, we were just very unhappy. And we came to the time where we were going to do the champion, which would prove who, what family was going to be over the other family. And they had, the reason why they had kept their fighters up there, their best fighters, was because they wanted their fighters to be rested for this conflict. And our fighters, they ended up being awake for, you know, 24 hours, and they were sort of ragged. So I gathered everybody together, including the mercenaries, and I said that being a good Scottish leader, all I promised them was I would be under fealty to them if we lost. I didn't mention you folks, you know. So. You are free to make your own decision. And we had a gentleman from the Dark Lord. His name was Caradon. And he came up and he offered me his dagger held first. And I said, no, I, you're a mercenary. You, you know, we'll give you what we promised and you can go. Do not, because, you know, don't bind yourself to me. And he stood up and he said, I know that you're having trouble with the, your enemy's honor, but honor isn't dependent on the person you're fighting. It's not what they do that makes a difference. It's what you do. And at that point, all the households were filled. And it was something that, that lesson that we learned, that the most important thing in our honor is what you do. And so anyway, we, shortly after that, we became a principality. And uh, our first prince was Sean Mickler, the war leader of the Ardu. Now, before he got to be prince, right, I have one more tale about him. We were running, I was running the tavern at uh, Warlord. And my tavern had been, usually it did quite well on Friday night, but the rain had come. And so I was not breaking even. And I didn't know what to do. So Lord Daffod Silvertongue, of course, the better town, and Lloyd Van Acre came up with me with a proposal. They would go out and take slaves, and then we would sell them for the tokens, and therefore, I, you know, make my tavern be, you know, break even. Now, this was great. I'm raking in money, counting it up, but you know, not considering the morality of the whole situation. And all at once they look around and they say, we're out of people to sell. And they look at me. <laughs> and DV says, well, you know, the tavern keeper's a handsome woman. <laughs> you know, maybe we'll get something for her out of the cadal. So, they took me captive. <laughs> and now I discovered being captive was not as much fun as I thought it was. I'm in being bid on, and there's at least one man who's gotten up to $45 being bidding on me, and I'm not sure what that twinkle of the eye really means. <laughs> you know, and I'm upset. <laughs> and all at once there came two fighters and they pulled into uh, chorus and chorus had my chain 
and they pulled the chain away and yelled, run! And I ran to the arms of my family. And I turned around to see who my rescuers were. And it was the chief, uh, the war chieftain of the Ardoon and the bard of the Ardoon. It was Sean McFlann and Aaron Rivensborn. And, I'm, and Sean, you know, fights his way free, but Aaron is killed. And I run with uh, guards at my back over and I go, Aaron, why did you do this? Why did you risk your life for your sworn enemy? And he looked up and he said, no person of the people should ever be a slave. And we all felt for it. <laughs> and that is the story between why in Onsteora every slave is uh, set free after 24 hours on the land. And the king that made that book was Lloyd Van Aker. And he remembered that lesson 